Good morning. My name is Brian Haskett, Sales Manager for EarthChain. First off, I would like to thank you for taking the time to view our digital trade show on solving the dilemma of deburring small parts. <clears throat> During this presentation, we will discuss advantages to magnetic deburring and the cost it can save your organization. I will do this through some real-life application that we have implemented throughout the years. I would also like to inform you that if you have any questions during this presentation, please slide your cursor over the green box at the top of your screen and click on the chat feature and ask away. We will do our best to get to your questions with the amount of time we have today. If we are unable to answer your questions, um, somebody, someone will contact you directly after this presentation. If you happen to not be able to stay with us through this whole presentation, you can visit our website at www.technicsusa.com to view the recorded version. Today we hope to answer some of the following questions. What is the spinner? How does it work? What are the benefits of the spinner process versus alternative methods? We'll refer to some success studies, uh, some success stories, along with the, the highlighted benefit of the spinner deburring system versus other more traditional processes. <clears throat> cover some frequently asked questions. Also answer a question, how do I determine if the spinner will work for my parts? We will close today with the Q&A session. Our first success story is from a manufacturer of precision fittings for high-pressure liquid chromatography equipment. The part was a small valve body with a small spray aperture in the ID. This company was looking to improve their capacity and achieve more consistent results. The small spray aperture had varying sizes starting at only 20 thousandths. Due to the location of the burrs in the ID of the part and the size of the aperture, traditional tumbling technology simply wouldn't work. The company had been relying on handy burring processes to finish out these parts. <clears throat> the burring became a bottleneck in their production as it took 16 man hours to deburr 400 of their parts. They did not have room to expand their deburring department at this current time. After sample testing the customer's parts in the spinner and performing production runoff for the customer, they moved forward with the acquisition of one spinner deburring system. The results were tremendous. All parts passed the quality standards required. Diffusion patterns and flow rates critical to the proper functioning of this part were achieved and the spinner helped deliver more consistent results. The time saving was incredible. We were able to go from 16 man hours to just one and a half man hours to finish the entire batch of 400 parts. This time savings helped the customer realize return on investment in just under six months. Finally, deburring was no longer their bottleneck in the production schedule, and they now had the capacity to meet greater production loads. A secondary benefit that the customer also discovered was the surface finish and the fine OD and ID threads were improved from the polishing action of the spinner media. So thread gauges slid on like butter according to this customer. <clears throat> this kind of impact, that this, this is the kind of impact the spinner can have on your company and has had on hundreds of companies we have implemented. You might ask, what is the spinner system? Well, the spinner system is a unique deburring and polishing system, specifically targeting small precision parts. As you can see in the bullet below, um, we do cover you know, the realm of medical parts, bone screws, RF connectors, and a lot of other small components. Um, as you can see in the pictures there, if it's in the pictures, we've probably seen it over the years, and we can probably help you out with that application. Moving on to how does it work? Well, you simply start by adding the appropriate amount of media and work pieces to the processing container. Just enough water is added to cover the parts. A small amount of soap is added to clean, to help clean, as well as provide lubricity during the deburring process. 
So far, this is about the same process that is used for the more traditionally tumbling methods. <clears throat> the magic in this process is the media, as this slide highlights. The media is very small stainless steel pins. We offer sizes range from 8,000 in diameter all the way up to a heavier 60,000 diameter. The size of the media, along with the processing speed of the unit, can affect the aggressiveness of the spinner process. The small size of the media allows deburring in places traditional media simply cannot get to. <clears throat> the next piece of this magic comes from the process of how the media is propelled. Strong magnets beneath the processing well of the spinner rotate and rapidly change the magnetic polarity in the processing container. As the media is slightly magnetic, it responds by quickly jumping around and flowing in the direction of the, magnet, of the magnet's rotation. Since the media is being propelled with magnets instead of vibration or gravity, it retains energy in the ID areas of your part. This is a huge advantage of the process. Um, the ability to deburr ID areas as well as cross holes. The flow of the media produces something you just really have to see and feel to believe. Although the process looks very aggressive, you can put your hand in the process container when the machine is running at full speed and feel the gentle form-fitting brushing effect that is created. This brushing addresses all areas of the part, both OD as well as ID, removing lighter burrs and polishing all surfaces. Edge brakes can also be controlled by the size of the media as well as the processing time. The process is gentle enough to deburr and polish very fine, thin pieces that we shall see in our next success story. This customer manufactures fine stamp parts used in credit card scanners. Traditional tumbling with polishing media took too long and failed to remove all burrs. This customer had tried other more advanced technologies such as high energy centrifuges as well as centrifugal disk processes, but were unable to consistently achieve the required results. Removing the burrs and maintaining a critical flatness tolerance were essential in any solution they came across. The customer was employing 20 finishing personnel using hand dremels to deburr the parts. This was a very expensive proposition and the customer was at risk of losing the job due to very high finishing costs. <clears throat> what used to take 20 people now is accomplished with two spinner deburring systems. The optimal cycle time for their part was only two minutes. Throughput was dramatically increased as the parts could be ran in batches of several hundred parts at a time and the flatness tolerance was easily maintained in the spinner, and the customer realized a return on investment in less than two months. This customer was able to not only keep their job, but also realize higher margins than ever. This customer's application highlights a key benefit of the spinner, being gentle enough to handle even the most delicate parts. We have numerous customers that manufacture delicate parts such as stents, parts with extremely fine OD threads, micro-sized parts with tiny features all achieve dramatic improvements in their finishing process with the spinner. As we have discussed, the spinner allows batch deburring parts that have traditionally required either expensive hand deburring methods due to ID burrs or delicate features, including OD threads and softer materials. This can make a huge impact in throughput and remaining competitive in the marketplace today. Whereas ceramic tumbling media wears down and needs change frequently, the spinner media does not wear the same way. <clears throat> this media lasts for several years, and also ceramic media can create jamming issues as it wears away. Since the stainless steel media used in the spinner does not have this same kind of wear, it will perform for years without creating any jamming issues. Another great benefit of the stainless steel media is that it does not create any sludge or effluent in the wastewater. As ceramic media wears, it creates a sludge in the wastewater 
that needs to be addressed before the wastewater can be discarded. The spinner media does not share this same drawback. The wastewater will have a particulate from the parts, but no sludge. This simplifies wastewater treatment and saves time and money as well. Also, since there is no sludge, the parts come out of the process of our process clean, often not requiring any additional cleaning operations. This can eliminate another step in pr the production process, speeding up your production and reducing your cost. Processing times are usually a fraction of the time required in traditional tumbling or with handy burring. Also, the spinner does not impinge any material on the surface of the part, or ceramic media grinds and abrades your part. This will dimensionally change the part and can impinge material on your surface. I would like to speak just a little bit further on that last benefit since this is one of the most commonly asked questions we get at shows, um, during meetings with medical implant manufacturers, just with the, typically within general people I just come in contact with. We have helped many medical manufacturing companies improve their deburring and polishing operations with the spinner. One large concern it is any process cannot impinge any material, especially ferrous material, in the surface of the parts. We have worked with these companies and have gone through great, great lengths to ensure the spinner process is safe for their parts. We have performed many tests, including surface chemical analysis to examining the surface of the parts with an electron microscope. In all cases, the spinner passed the test with flying colors. Here the customer needed to improve the burrs from a milling operation in the threads of a titanium bone screw, as well as clean up the milled threads. The customer was using manual methods at the time we came in contact. After rigorous testing, we confirmed that the spinner did not impinge any material on the surface of the part, and the parts themselves did not cause any damage from batch deburring. The general flow of the spinner media allows for batch deburring of these parts. Since all the parts travel in the media at relatively close rates of speed, they do not cause damage to each other. Also, the form-fitting brushing action engulfs the part in a gentle deburring action that helps remove the burrs in the milled slots as well as the threads. This customer realized a return on investment in less than a year even with the acquisition of six spinner units. <clears throat> with this company, it's true that the little things mean a lot, especially when it comes to tolerances in machine components for the medical world. With 25 years experience in this business, this company had loads of experience producing small, complex parts. They had an opportunity to diversify into the medical industry, manufacturing an air motor for a biopsy device that takes breast tissue samples for analysis. Metal burrs left over from the manufacturing process was a large part of their quality problem that had to be addressed and solved before they could move ahead with this project. When this opportunity came up to manufacture this air pump, they decided to move very quickly and increase capacity by purchasing a bar-fed Citizen M32 CNC Swiss type turning machine to expedite production of these, of these pumps. This configuration allowed the shop to perform three operations at once, giving them a big advantage in cycle time. Their customer asked that they, have, that they produce prototypes within three weeks of the CNC machine hitting the floor. And during the first few weeks, they had to set up the machine and begin running these prototypes. The deburring problem was discovered by the manufacturing engineer manager. These burrs limited their ability to provide a quality and quantity of parts that the customer required. This part is a cylindrical rotor that has six one millimeter slots, each cross drilled twice. The burrs in the one millimeter slot could not be reached with their conventional tumbling equipment, and their only other options were deburring by hand we're sending these parts out for electro deburring. Both operations were unacceptable due to the additional cost and time added in the production cycle. While looking for an alternative deburring technology, this company discovered that the spinner deburring system, 
They found that the spinner's unique stainless steel pin media could best be burst small precision parts with zero damage. This company saw our ability to provide a fast, free test run service to see if our machine is good suit for their problem. They sent parts and two days later the parts were returned to the customer. The tested parts were accompanied with a test report stating the media size as well as the cycle time used. This allowed them to select the best results and know the media used and the cycle time. Once the samples were returned, they were inspected again by the manufacturing engineering manager. He discovered that our process was able to deburr all sample parts with 100% success. And as I touched there, the return on investment for this company was less than 10 months. So now we're into the benefits here. As you see, the benefits is batch deburring parts that have required expensive and time-consuming manual methods. We're going to dramatically reduce cycle times and eliminate production bottlenecks. We're going to deburr small, intricate geometries not possible with your traditional technologies and medias. We're going to just give you out a clean part, no sludge or effluent in the wastewater, and it really can fit any size operation. Moving into a couple good applications, like I touched on earlier, medical parts, um, bone screws, bone plate stents, any type of orthopedic implants um, in the stainless world or the titanium world is a great fit. We've had great success over the years. As well as in the aerospace industry, the fastener world, with having the tight tolerances that they do have, we have had a lot of success with the fasteners as well as the nuts. And lastly, you know, on the applications, the job shops find this to be a great, great addition to their shop. If you have, if you're working with quick turnarounds, slow, uh, quick setup runs, this is going to be a way for you to save money and keep your deburring operations as well as your quality in house. Now, moving into some frequently asked questions that we've seen, the spinner is best at removing a lighter burr. And what is a lighter burr, you might ask? We define a light burr as having a thin burr root. As shown in this illustration here, BF is the, burr, is the burr root. Heavier burrs with a larger burr root will tend to bend but not break away from the brushing action that the spinner media can produce. A good method to use is a rule of thumb. You can, if you can remove the burr with your thumbnail, the spinner will most likely also be able to remove the burr. Often it is not possible to conduct this test, especially for ID burrs. Here we ask you send us sample parts for testing. We will determine the optimal size, media, and cycle time for your parts. Larger medias can increase the aggressiveness of the deburring action. Moving into his more frequently asked questions. <clears throat> what materials are best for successful processing in the spinner? Well, the spinner works best with parts made from non-ferrous materials such as aluminum, brass, copper, stainless, titanium, etc. That's kind of what we try to gear toward. Next question here we see is what kind of surface